This is math facts that sound fake but are actually true, part 3. Consider the real numbers between 0 and 1 and pick a few at random to see what those numbers add up to. It will take at least two such numbers to add to a value that's 1 or greater. But what's really odd is that the average number of selected numbers that you have to add together to get a sum that's bigger than 1 is the number E. That is, it takes on average about 2.718 randomly selected numbers between 0 and 1 to get a sum that is bigger than 1. There are exactly as many even integers as there are integers. This is because if we pair every integer with its double, we pair up every Every integer with an even integer in a unique and one-to-one -one way, and this is only possible because the two sets have the same number of elements. Similarly, there are exactly as many integers as there are rational numbers. Again, this is because there is a way to pair up all the integers with all the rational numbers in a one-to-one -one way. In fact, this is what it means for a set to be infinite. A set is infinite if it has a proper subset, that is a subset that doesn't have everything in it, that has the same number of elements as the set itself, or rather has a one-to-one -one mapping that pairs up everything in both sets. But some infinite sets are so much larger than other infinite sets that they cannot be paired up in a one-to-one -one way. For example, there is no way to pair the integers with the real numbers in a one-to-one -one way that uses everything in both sets. So there are, not surprisingly, a strictly larger number of real numbers than integers. Any set that has a one-to-one -one pairing with the integers is called countably infinite because you can count them in some sense. Any infinite set that does not have a one-to-one -one pairing with the integers is called uncountably infinite. So the integers and the rational numbers are both countably infinite, but the real numbers are uncountably infinite. Next, consider a game show where you can pick one of three doors. One door has a prize behind it, but the other two doors have junk. If you pick one of these doors, you have a one in three chance of having selected the door with the prize. But what if the host then opens one of the two doors that you didn't pick and shows that it has junk behind it? Then they give you the option to switch your choice to the remaining door. Should you? Well, it turns out that you should. This is because you still have a 1 in 3 chance that your first choice was right, and hence a 2 out of 3 chance that it's wrong. That fact doesn't change when the host shows you that one of the two remaining doors has junk behind it. Thus, you have a 2 in 3 chance that the prize is behind the door that you didn't pick. That is, the remaining door is twice as likely to have the prize behind it than the door that you originally picked. If that's not enough, take this happy fact. If you take an integer and add the squares of its digits, you get a new number. If you take this new number and add the squares of its digits, you get yet another new number. If you continue to do this process, over and over, some numbers will create a sequence that reduces to the number 1 and then it never changes again. Any number that does this is called a happy number, and any number that doesn't is called unhappy or sad. No, really, that's the name. You can look it up. What's really bizarre, though, is that every unhappy number, instead of creating a sequence that goes to 1, creates a sequence that ends up cycling through the number sequence 89, 145, 42, 20, 4, 16, 37, and 58 forever. Seriously, no matter how large the number, the sequence of the sum of the squares of the digits either eventually terminates to one or ends up cycling forever in this sequence of eight numbers. The concept of a happy number is base specific though because it has to do with the digits that represent a number. For example, the number eight is unhappy in base 10, but happy in base four where it's represented by the digits two zero. In fact, in both the bases two and four, every number is happy and these bases are known as happy bases. By the way, a number that is both happy in base 10 and prime is called the happy prime and these made an appearance in an episode of doctor who where knowledge of them saved a ship from being eaten by a living star find the next number in the sequence 313 313 337 what 379 what it's a sequence of happy prime 379 happy what any number that reduces to one when you take the sum of the square of its digits and continue iterating until it yields one is a happy number any number that doesn't isn't a happy prime is a number that's both happy and prime now type it in see i told you that you'd need to know this stuff when you grow up Anymore. Okay, this one's a bit silly, but might be news to kids of this generation. Older digital calculators can be used to make hidden messages. This is because several numbers represented in the old standard digital format would appear to be words when viewed upside down. For example, the number 53045 would make the word shoes when portrayed upside down. And 376606 makes goggles upside down. 372215 makes the word sizzle. 707 becomes LOL upside down, which I'm sure is what you're doing right now, either for finding these silly or finding it hilarious that kids ever thought these things were funny in the first place. But hey, we didn't have YouTube when we were kids. Now, take any positive integer. If the number is even, cut it in half to get a new number. If the number is odd, multiply it by 3 and then add 1 to get a new number. If that new number is not 1, do this process again to that new number. Try this out. I'm willing to wager that no matter what number you pick, the sequence of numbers it creates eventually reaches the number 1. 
In fact, humanity has never found a number that doesn't do this. But mathematicians have also never been able to prove that this sequence always eventually hits the number one, no matter what number you start with. So this isn't quite a math fact per se, but just a really weird conjecture. This statement is called the Kolatch conjecture, and it's been befuddling mathematicians for the better part of the last century. If you do happen to find such a number, send it to me. We might just get to publish a math paper together, but don't hold your breath. We've already had computers try this sequence for all the numbers from one to two to the 68th power, and every single one of those numbers produces a sequence that eventually hits the number one. So if there is a number that does it, it's bigger than two to the 68th power. Well, that was math facts that sound fake, but are actually true part three. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a part four. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Scholar Sauce. We're getting closer to a thousand subscribers every single day. So help us out and we'll see you next time.